some very interesting news coming out of Spain this morning with the news that Almeria head coach Idega Johnson will be leaving the club. This comes after the two parties failed to agree terms on a new contract and Johnson's current deal expiring in the next couple of days. A club statement explains that director of football Clates will be looking to appoint a new head coach in the next few weeks. News to follow on this. Well, it's it's been a summer of change at Almeria and I didn't plan for any of this. Idega Johnson left. He, he's gone. He's left the club. He's now an assistant manager at Levante. He didn't just move there either. Actually, what happened was his contract expired. We went into contract negotiations to try and extend his contract for another season. My plan was to keep him around, even though we did talk about and have a look at some potential new managers. I wanted to keep Johnson. He's finished third. He finished fourth and then third. He, he got to a cup final. I was going to give him another season, but he wanted more money and we didn't have the finances to give him more money because we were restricted in how much we could offer to our assistant managers. I offered him, I think, 9,000 and he was saying no. He's actually signed for Levante on 5,000 per week now, which is a bit of a kick in the teeth, but it means we needed a new manager. So obviously from this point with Johnson out, I started the process of looking for somebody new to hopefully take Almeria to winning La Liga, winning the Champions League, moving to the next level. A bit like Will still did for us at Spurs. That's the plan anyway. And I drew up a shortlist. Of course, I did as any good DOF would do here. I went looking, I put out an advert. I tried to find the best options that could take us and lead us from this point on. And these were the guys that were available. Let's go through them shortly, just quickly to show you who I was debating with, I put out loads of tweets. I spoke to the Claytron members as well and asked them to do a bit of a vote. They have voted for somebody. These were the options that came up. First of all, well, first of all, I'll show you how I've how I've made this shortlist here. I think it's got all the information in this that you'd want to look for for a new manager if you're doing this type of save. And perhaps actually maybe I'll save this view so that and I'll put it on Patreon. If you are doing this type of save, you can download it and use it yourself. because I found it really, really useful. I've got their name. I have got well, I've got whether they're a free agent as well, which is useful too because of the compensation involved. Nationality, their personality, which I think is pretty important. Tactical style, vital. I really wanted somebody at least, well, gag and press or at the very least, maybe vertical tiki tacker was probably my my ideal here for tactical style. So bear that in mind when we look at some of the options here. I've got their age in there. Not really as important, but I suppose if we were to go for somebody like Sam Pauli, you'd have to bear in mind that he's 70 years old and probably will retire quite quickly. Playing style as well. Not as important, I don't think, but just something to look for. And then their preferred formation. This one's really important. Obviously, we're currently playing with a 4 2 3 one we do have two good strikers though. So again, bear that in mind. Tactical knowledge, motivation or motivating, man management, judging player ability and judging player potential. I think judging the ability, probably more important than the potential, but also just for the squad in general. These are really important. I really wanted to go high on the tactical knowledge if possible, which is one of the ways that I filtered to get these guys up onto the shortlist because I want them to maybe be a bit higher than Good Johnson's tactical knowledge, which was at 11. I think an improvement on that might be useful. These were his attributes, just to bear in mind my comparisons too. And I went through these guys. George Sampaoli, very famous manager, has managed teams like Sevilla and Ihon Espanyol recently in this save. He managed in Brazil, Marseille in real life too. He um he wouldn't talk to us. He wanted too much money. He was maybe one of the top choices. He plays a 5-2-3 controlled possession, but, but because of his reputation, he was pretty high up my list actually, but he wouldn't talk. Next up, Bertrand Rezo. Brilliant option. Look at his attributes along here. Does play Tiki Taka. Does play the same formation that we have been playing though. So he was pretty high up. In fact, he was the Claytreon vote. He was my first choice because of the Claytreon vote. And I do listen to my board members. However, he also would not talk to us and rejected the contract. Meaning we had to go elsewhere. Ramon Tejada is a coach at us. He was high up my list because he's got sensational attributes. Tactical knowledge of 20. Plays the same formation. Judging ability and potential of 20 each. Lower on the motivating and the man management, but he plays a vertical tiki tacker, which kind of put me off slightly, but he was high up the list. Next up, Sadio Mane. Uh, he was on the list because, well, he's Sadio Mane and he applied when I actually put out an advert. He applied for the job and I thought, you know what? We have to consider him. Let's play the right the right tactic that we currently play. Attributes not as good. Giovanni Martuschiello. Martuschiello. I'm going to go with that. He was playing a vertical tiki tag, and then he changed to a control possession, which put me off slightly. I did like the idea of playing a 4-4-2 diamond, though. 
Good attributes on him. He was high up the list until he changed his tactical style. Miguel Calzado. Gegen press, very good. 4-3-3, good. Low man management. That kind of put me off him. Rene Maric didn't like his style of play too much. Plays a 4-4-2, really low man management. We looked at Rene Maric before, in fact, and I did see that I did put a bid in here, look, which I'm actually going to withdraw. Well, it doesn't matter. This is an old save file. I've already decided who's the manager is going to be, but he did want to talk to us, which was important. And then finally, the other two options, which I'm... I'll, I'll be honest with you. I was leaning towards from the start because... They're new gens, and I quite like the idea of, idea of a new gen. Both Geg and Press, both 46, passing style or a standard style. Play a 4 4 2, both of them, and with good attributes 15 tactical knowledge, 14 tactical knowledge, 15 motivating, 16 motivating. They're very similar. I think, though, Johan Dumont, here he is, was just edging it ahead of Bigger Kayembe. And here is his attributes here, and here is his profile. With all of that in mind, I have made a decision. And welcome to the club, Johan Dumont. He is our new manager and we've appointed him. Let me jump to that save file so I can show you how he looks in the role. And here he is then, officially in post. Johan Dumont is the Almeria assistant manager head coach. He's the head coach. We know this, right? Here are his manager attributes. Now that he's in the club, you can see, I think he's a really good fit for us. He is going to play a 4-4-2, which is going to be a change. We're going to need to be doing some tweaking and maybe some transfer business to suit this in the summer. But I was just thinking, and something that really did tickle my fancy a little bit with this, was the fact that we could have Boldovino and Chavez Carretera as the two strikers, and I think they're going to score goals. Boldovino didn't get many opportunities last year under Johnson. I'm wondering if we can get him into the team. I'll show you Boldovino here. Look, if I just go, here is the 4-4-2 that is something like I've just loaded in a Gegen Press 4-4-2 to give us an idea of what we might use. You might actually be able to spot some new transfers as we go through this here. But I just wanted to show you Duvan Boldovino. By the way, I've added new faces to everybody. The whole club has actual faces now and they look glorious. I was using my mid-journey method and they look great. Here's Boldovino. When he recovers from being upset about not having enough game time last year, I think we've got our striker on our hands here. And him and Chavez Caratero, I think, can score goals, which is one of the reasons that... One of the things that tempted me into going for Johan Dumont. He, if we just go back to his manager profile here, just some things that we can look out for under his reign. That 4-4-2, of course, passing style. Uses young players in low priority cups, which I think is quite cool. Hopefully he uses some of those youth players, because that's important. I'm not sure... Good Johnson really gave them enough of a go and kind of stuck with his first team, which kind of works. But maybe in the cups, if we see Dumont using some of those youngsters, that could be good. And he focuses play down the flanks. We're going to need to make sure our wingers are, are really, really good. That's going to be useful. Just a bit of background on him, I suppose. He's French. He's had no jobs up until this point. This is his first main job. He is also Belgian. He was born in Ecully in uh, France, which is probably not how you say that. Here he is, the man behind the, uh, the revolution here at Almeria for this season. And just something else to mention, because I thought this was a fun thing to do. Bigger Kayembe did also join the club. He's come in as a coach because he's a really, really good coach and maybe gives us a, back a bit of a backup. If Dumont is bad, maybe we promote Bigger Kayembe to the head coach role and we go from there. A bit like Spurs have done with their many, many different coaches coming in to manage the club this year. But he's come in too. So welcome to Bigger Kayembe, who did nearly tempt me because of his name being so funny and great. Bigger Kayembe, the Belgian coach. There he is, look, in there. That, that is the staffing updates. I just want to show you something else before we move on too, because I think this one's interesting and is going to interest people as well. Spurs have sacked Will Still and appointed Arnie Slot. They've got rid of our boy, Will Still, who... I did have a look, and it was after I uh, had already appointed Johan Dumont. He doesn't want to join, though. Just to check, look, he, there's apparently there's not a job that interests him. He's not interested in coming in as our head coach. So uh, do not, do, you don't need to, you know, clamour for that in the comments down below. But he's been sacked. Look, Milestones sacked as manager of Spurs. He was there from 2024 until 2030. So we had six years at the club, which is pretty good. He won the Champions League a couple of times, right? I'm not sure if this one, the first one doesn't count because we won it technically, but he was there and then he won the Champions League on his own, won the Super Cup, won the Carabao Cup, didn't win the league again though. Will Spurs improve from there with Arnie Slot? I guess we'll find out. What I'm going to go and do now, or what I've already done, but I'm going to show you now, is all of the transfer business that I have done to try and build us towards using this 4-4-2 for this season. I have done a lot of transfers. Let me show you what I've been up to. All right, summer transfer business. This is the, the best part, right? We're doing loads of business. I've spent some money. 
I've actually sold a lot of players this summer, a lot of turnover, because as we talked about in the last episode or the one before, the scaling back of the owner's investment has really hit us hard. We've not got a lot of money to work with, so we've had to sell two buy, and I've tried to reinvest the money that I've raised in the youth of the future again. I think it's the smart way to go. Also utilizing some really important loans, actually. And the first one is this one here. So we're back on before the tick over date. I did three transfers before it ticked over. They were as follows. First one, Daniel Agal is a youngster that we signed at Spurs. If you remember this one, then fair play to you. We signed him for Spurs for £1.4 million and he's really, really developed after a massive season for Stoke in the championship and he's turned into, I think, a brilliant centre-back with loads of potential and Spurs have been willing to loan him to us. Arnie Slot has been accommodating for a former DOF of, of his new club. And uh, we're going to bring him in as an option, probably to replace Mukhtar Diakabi, who has now, of course, moved on. We saw that in the last episode. Only on 15,000, so we're just paying his wages. There's a little bit of money that we're paying to keep him here. I think it might be on his loan for here. 1.3 million pounds to have him for the season. But I think he's a great, great replacement for Diakabi and a good bit of smart business there. There's the transfers that I'm not going to show you yet. He was the one that came in before the tick over. Everything else, this, these ones were done before. You see, last season we spent 17 million, but raised 16.5. We're not actually spending that much money now, are we? We've definitely scaled back from the first season where we spent loads. But then again, we raised loads as well. With that sale of Charles Vea, we basically spent what we raised so i think we're doing okay here we're not overspending we're not spending as much money as we did at spurs it's a completely different challenge and really really enjoyable players did leave before that window opened officially though of course dear carby went on that free transfer he was a youngster bassy ignore that one berkovic a good backup defensive midfielder and was a good player for us but we got an offer that was 20 million pounds guaranteed in the future potentially rising a little bit more than that and i thought do you know what that's the type of deal that we need to be doing. We need to bring in these players for cheap, sell them for profits, and that's the way that we're going to sustain ourselves with this new financial model. He has been brought in for 6 million, gone for 13, which will go def well, it will go definitely to 20 million, I think, is the, the way that that is structured. But 20 million pounds for a player that was never really a starter, but was a good option, didn't really produce massive ratings. I thought it was something we should do. It's good buy and and, you know, a nice fond farewell to Vaclav Berkovic, who I think was a good player for us. He has moved on. And then finally, before the window officially opened, we did also move on somebody that we knew was going to go. Alejandro Pozo was going to go on a free this summer. And I've managed to... Oh, no. He was going to go on a free next summer. But he'd already told me he was going to leave on a free. So I decided to uh, cut our losses a little bit. He's been sold to Valencia for £2.7 million. Played a lot of games for us, Pozo. So he's going to need to be replaced in this squad. We almost got our money back for him in, what, about eight years of, of service. So I think we've done okay with that one. He's 31 as well on pretty high wages. So it does help us in the summer window. Those guys were before it ticked over. These guys are after it ticked over. £24 million spent. 24.5. £70 million raised in transfers out. So we are making money in the window, paying off some debts potentially, which is something we do need to do because of those future installments on players like Chavez Caratero, etc. We do kind of need to pay it back. So but I think we've done okay. There are some good players coming in here alongside Daniel Gahl. And I think I'm hoping we're going to sustain ourselves until we can make enough money. Maybe another big sale would finance getting in some big players to replace the ones we've got. But I think we've built a good squad. And with this 4-4-2, I think we're doing okay. I'm going to go through the players, then I'll show you how they might look in the system, and we'll go from there. Here are here are my investments in the youth. Not big money spent, but some players that I think have massive futures in the game. First up, Mattia Balsamo is a young 19-year-old striker from Italy. Massive potential, of course. That's what I've been looking for. Using the same methods, using those recruitment focuses to find the players with the potential, and then just going through and having a look who looks like they're going to develop in the future. 19, he has started playing some games on loan at Panathinaikos. Played nine games last year. Didn't play great, but £4.8 million is how much we're going to pay for him. Could go to 8.5 eventually if he plays like 50 games, I think it is. And I think he's got potential. He's got attributes in the right place. Don't think he's going to be a starter. Now playing two strikers, we do need some backup options. And Balsamo is going to be one of those. He's been capped for Italy at under 20 levels. I think he's got some potential, so I like the look of him. Next up, Giacomi Gidotti. Gidotti, who is a young Italian. Another Italian, actually. 18 years old. Now, this guy, you, if you thought Balsamo had potential, have a look at Gidotti, who has 
he's 18 and look at his attributes already. He looks like a brilliant option for the future. And he looks like a baller as well with the picture that I've given him. He had his new gen face. I'll put it on the screen right now. Had like, hot, you see he, his white hair that he had in there. So that's why I've given him this face here using mid journey. I don't know where he's going to play yet. I, well, I guess he's going to play as a central midfielder when we do bring him back. But I have loaned him. I've sent him to our enemies, Elche, who, uh, I mean, they beat us in every single game, don't they, in Spain? And he's gone there. Elche and um, I'm hoping he's going to play some games for them. He won't have yet because we've not started the season but real potential on him. He's signed for 1.9 million pounds and that is it. It was a release clause from Sassena in Serie B in Italy. 1.9 million and I think we've got ourselves a real gem there. Couldn't believe it when I saw his uh, release clause pop up. He's got loads of potential. Really good. Not even he hasn't even got bad cons look. He's got heading and uh, peripheral figure in the dressing room which is because he's a youngster. He could be a Real good player in the future. Again, not going to impact us too much this season. I do wonder how we're going to do this season with these players coming in. Are we going to be able to kick on or are we just going to try and maintain where we are and hope these players continue to develop? I'm not quite sure. We will see. Next up, Aaron Yilmaz, 875k for him. Massive value. He is a young German international. He's currently in the under 19s. I'm not sure he's going to play this year yet. Weirdly, has played left back. He's a right footed player, but I'm not sure when he played that game. Probably going to be a central midfield midfielder for us in this 4-4-2 but look at the value on him oh sorry I, I tell a lie he was in the under 19s I've loaned him out as well to give him some first team action I think I sent him back yeah I sent him back to the team we bought him from where he started playing some games last year played 34 has already played for them this year Aaron Yilmaz 875k again that was a release clause so he has been brought in for that Jan Henkel is another midfielder another one with I mean look at the money we could make on these another 18 year old German player I've sent him on loan to Galatasaray 2.9 million for him could go to 5.5 hopefully gonna play loads of games in the first division in Turkey they've spent a little bit of money to bring him in 88k as well he's already played Jan Henkel I love the look of him look at these players we're bringing in left-footed central midfielder probably in the future uh, a couple more Another loan to beef up the squad. We needed to replace Pozo and I've replaced him with a player that I've seen on my list of scout reports. Basically for this entire save. I think I might have looked at him when I was at Spurs. Very back at right back as well. 23 now, so maybe not quite as much potential but could still improve. He is a... Well, he's a right back. He's, he's a good option at right back. Not going to be a starter because we have Fernandes there, but he's going to be in the squad. And then finally, we needed to replace another defender that's left and I'll show you them right now because do you know what I think it's important to show you we have made a lot of money from selling somebody that I didn't want to sell Bruno Antonacci has gone City came in with a bid that was almightily close to his 42 million pound release clause and I decided that I'd try and swindle the system slightly and see if we could extract as much value from the deal as possible We've got 37 million pounds for him. It could go to 56. Remember, he had a release clause of 42 million pounds. We've also got on him, if I go to clauses, we do have a future clause on him too that will mean that we get 30% of any profit as well. And uh, we're going to get this money over a longer period of time. But I think we've done well with the fact that he had a 42 million pound release clause. He was about to be a starter, I think. He looks so good. He's going to go in and probably start for City, which is just a bit depressing, isn't it? probably weakens us a little bit that's why we needed to bring in another center back which is why i've invested some money in the future signing of gustavo left side of center back he looks a bit like Antonacci looked like when we signed him and hopefully he develops from here he is I'm not sure he's a much as much of a ball player he's only got 11 passing eight vision but i think he will develop and turn at least into somebody that we can sell in the future he's cost us 12 million could go to 15. He feels a bit like Antonacci. Antonacci, by the way, just to show you this uh, this whole money ball process that we're going for. Signed for 15, sold for 37, could go to 56. It's a, it's a fair bit of money to invest in him, but he did play a lot of games and we've doubled our money, potentially trebled our money and a little bit more actually in the future. So that's our business. Let me know what you think of it. I know it's not a, there's no player there that jumps out at you as a massive improvement, but I think we've... We've invested in the future and we've already got a, squad, a strong squad. I want to finish top four again. Maybe aim to do a bit better in the Champions League because the thing that we need to remember is our players that are, are already here are getting better. They're young players that are developing. So that's what I've kind of banked on this summer as well as raising a bit more money by selling players like Maxence Jarry. Not even got a face look because I sold him. We made a bit of money on him and that could be £28 million or will be, I think, £28 million. He's gone to Olympiacos. We've doubled our money on him and he played 13 games for us. 
He's moved on. Does have potential, but I think we've uh, we had to take the money for him. Doesn't really have a role in our squad without playing an attacking midfielder. I'm not sure he's great in the centre of midfield because of his four tackling. So I've moved him on. Markovic, the backup left back for a very long time, has moved on too. Didn't play loads. He's gone for £10 million. Could go to 11.25. Again, pretty much doubling our money on him after he played two pretty good seasons. Played a lot of games in them. And then I've loaned out some people too. Robin Bertrand has been loaned out to a team in... Uh, where are these? Ferrol, Spain, I think. Yeah, in the uh, lower league, second division in Spain. Henkel we saw before, Gadotti we saw before. I've loaned out Johnson again, tried to sell him. He wouldn't go, but he's gone on loan to Hanover and I'm hoping they're paying some of his wages. They're paying they're paying all of his wages, which is why that was okay. I think there's a future fee there as well. There possibly is, man. Maybe there's not. Either way, he's uh, he's gone out on loan and they're going to pay his wages. That's our business. Let me show you how they might fit into the team with this 4-4-2. I'll put the best team in. Do you know what? Did I do it on here? I might have even done this. Do you know what? I think I did. Let's go through it, in fact, like this, because we've got this 4-4-2. We've got, and you can might be able to see some of the development of us, some of our good players here. Colon, right back, we have got, maybe not Gustavo on there, but Mario Fernandez is turning into a brilliant player, and I'm going to try and give him a new contract, I think, because his release clause is fairly low, 72 million. His value is quite close to his release clause, so I think I'm going to try and give him a new deal. Mario Fernandez, though, first choice right back with Ulig as the backup, and Salio Sacco is a youngster. Left back, we are probably going to go with Gaia. We've got Milan Jambo as the backup there, though. Loads of potential on him. I'm hoping he gets some game time, too, but Gaia probably have another season at the start as a starter. Perez and Gustavo as left-sided centre-backs. Gal and Svoboda as our right side of centre-backs. A lot of youth players there, but I think Gal is good enough. He's 20 and I think he's going to be the Diakabi replacement. Right mid, weird one, but I think Romeo Lavi is going to play as a right midfielder. He can play there, which is weird, but he can play there. Look, his, his attributes aren't too bad for it. And it means he still plays. I do wonder if in the future we need to invest in somebody who can play right mid. I looked at Alejandro there. Can play there, but he's left footed. And I think also Alejandro can be a backup striker for us. He is, we love Alejandro. He's here for another year with his loan too. But I think Lavia might play right mid. Not ideal, but I think, I think that might need to happen. Left mid, we're sorted. Marina is very, very good there. Very, very natural there as well. Our youngster, Geoffroy is the backup there. Left side of centre backs, we've got Moretti. Or oh, let's centre mid, I should say. Moretti and then Lavia probably will play some games in midfield. Freitas can play a bit deeper. And I think he'll be absolutely fine playing a little bit deeper there. He's going to be our, our playmaker, hopefully. We've then got Hedwig Koch and Chevalier. But also Chevalier, Chevalier can cover on the left-hand side as well. Hedwig Koch is developing into a really good player too. Like him a lot with his new face there. Then strikers, love this as, as options. Duvan Boldovino on the right-hand side. With Balsamo as the backup, maybe Dries Mass as well that I showed you before. Six foot five, big striker. I of hope he gets some games this year. Then on the left-hand side, Caratero, maybe Alejandro as the backup on that side too. I think the squad is good enough. I think we can aim for at least Champions League. I feel like there's a lot of talk in there, but there's a lot of transfer stuff to try and show you. The finances, by the way, you might want to see it. We're back in the, in the black, £44 million in the bank with a very healthy transfer budget left over as well, which I might see if I can spend on some other people. There is a little bit of time left in the window, but this was the, we're up to the first day of the season here, look. Pre-season's been good. We drew with Spurs, lost to Real Madrid, but beat every other team that we played. They weren't great teams in there, but um, it's been a good pre-season playing this 4-4-2. We're winning games, not conceding many. I'm hoping that continues into the season. And I will see you in January. I'm going to go and play half of this season. We start with Osasuna. We play, obviously, most of the teams in this first half of the season. We will enter the Champions League as well, that league phase. Hopefully, we qualify from that. But I'll see you as we enter January. And uh, hopefully, we've won some games. See you then. And here we are then at the, that was a nice start, wasn't it? Here we are at the January point of the season then, just about halfway through our season, a couple of games off for us. We have a game in hand over our other teams and we are fourth, which is maybe, is it disappointing? Is it okay? I think it's kind of in the middle between those two things. It's probably expected with the level of investment in the summer and it was an investment in youth. I'm not sure we could expect to go and start challenging a team like Real Madrid especially when look how high quality this La Liga season is so far with Real Madrid and Villarreal at the top. I don't know how we're supposed to get close to them. We've played 17 games and only lost three, which I think is pretty good for Almeria, but Real Madrid are, have lost once and Villarreal are unbeaten so far, halfway through the season. 48 points and 46 points for them. That is 
I don't think we can keep up for, with that. We are just about keeping up with Barcelona, who have 39 points. They've lost three as well. And to be honest, I think this feels about right. I'd like to aim for third this season, as well as maybe a run in the Champions League. And if we can do that, I think it's been a successful first season for Johan Dumont. However, it's going to be... It's going to be maybe one of those where it's like ugh, frustrating that we've not kicked on. But I'm hoping that we can continue to kick on when you look at actually how well, how, how good some of our players are becoming. Let's try and hold on to lots of them as well as selling some of them to make money. And we'll go from there. That's the aim of the game. That is the Almeria. That's the Almeria plan from this point on, I think. Fourth in the league then at the just about halfway point. Something else to mention as well is I have had a couple of uh, job interview offers newcastle wanted to bring us in which i think was quite cool imagine we did a dof say with newcastle with all of that money that could be quite fun not for now though i did decline it but just something to mention too as you see on the screen there and uh i guess then we should show you how the players have done and what the results have been this actually this fourth in the league could have been a lot better if it wasn't for the last two games the last two games in december we actually lost. Imagine we were... I've clicked on Alejandro accidentally there. Imagine we'd won those two games, an extra six points. It would have given us 40. We've been above Barcelona with a game in hand. We did, though, lose to Atletico Madrid 3-2 and Espanyol 2-1. We won nil up here and then they scored two late goals Look with Rafa Mir, which is... That's disappointing. But overall, it's been a good season so far. As with all of these seasons, some really good results in there. Some slightly disappointing ones like losing to Spurs. We had, we did it. It finally happened. We had an actual competitive game against our, our former team Spurs and um, we got dominated by them, smashed by them. In fact, they had 36 shots. We did only lose 2-1, but Benjamin Sesko, a player that we signed for them, what a player he's become. Just look at that transfer value on him. Yeah, we are maybe still a long way off winning this Champions League with the team that we've got. Chavez Carretero was injured for this one. He wasn't even on the bench. He actually had a, an injury for a while. Boldovino and Alejandro were leading the line there. Just to show you some transfer stuff, though, I suppose. We've just seen it there. There wasn't any other transfers brought in. I don't think I sold anybody else. I just want to check. Oh, I did loan out Jan Henkel. Oh, I think I did that before. I think I showed you that one before, right? Don't think I sold anybody else either, but I did and have made Alejandro's loan permanent. It won't happen until 2032 because that's when this loan actually expires, but we are going to be signing him permanently at the end of that for, I think it was about 30 million pounds. It was quite cheap, actually. It wasn't too much money at all what was on here oh yeah no 13 million pounds that could go to 59 but only if he plays there's really really like stretch incentives for that deal i think it's probably going to end up about being 30 million pounds and then we're not going to pay that for probably until about 2035 so i think that one's okay and we're going to keep him because he's an almeria player isn't he alejandro he's been here for three seasons now he's having a good season this year seven goals four assists playing as a striker in lots of games if i show you his form here he is playing on the right wing sometimes right mid he's playing as a striker sometimes too and he's scoring goals he's scored in his last four actually which is really really good if i show you the stats of the players too Travis Carretero is our top goal scorer, 14 goals. Did have that injury, is wanted. I've given loads of new contracts, by the way. He's got a contract for five years and now with a, an optional three years as well. So he is sticking around. I've done this with all of our really good players. Lots of new contracts done in our role as DOF. He's got 11 league goals in 14, 14 and 16. A good season from him, 7.58. I think the performances, the average ratings and things. If I go to the tactic screen here, look, I can show you some of the average ratings. I won't go through all of them because I think you know the side by now and I think you can kind of guess who's been playing. But if you want to pause it and have a look at who's been playing the most games and who's been getting the best results. Eight goals from Boldovino in 12 starts, 14 from Caratero, eight goals from Alejandro. Pretty much the rest is as you would expect. But some of our players, there's an injury here to Colon, by the way. He's going to miss the next game, which could be interesting. Ivan Amor, who did play in a cup game, is going to have to start that one. Just look at Colon, by the way. I just, I feel like every episode we should have a look at his profile because look at him. I've given him a five-year contract with an option to sign for another three years too. I've, I've locked down. In fact, if I go to, maybe if I go, oops. If I go across here to uh, the contracts, you can see all of these guys at the top have deals for five years and I think with an option to extend it for another three years on top of that. Svoboda, Jambor, Mario Fernandez. What a player he's becoming, by the way. Look at the improvement on him at right back. All the way down to Caratero. And then we've got these guys expiring in the summer. The loans will ex will end, although Alejandro will join after that. That's actually next summer anyway. Gal, I wonder if we can extend him, actually. He's been very important for us. Played 16 games. Is starting to score one goal. I wonder, actually, can I do that now? Can I extend his loan? Because I think 
That could be quite cool. I don't know why I've done that such a long way around of doing it. I can't. It's too soon to extend it. Maybe in January I might be able to. That's the state of things. I um, I think this squad is in a really healthy spot with players that, if I look at the values, players that aren't playing loads of games. Balsamo, massive value. Chevalier, massive value wanted. I think that's loans, though. Uh, Hedwigcock, massive value. We might be able to sell players for good money in the future, especially players that aren't even playing. Dries Mass, by the way, I said I wanted him to play a game. He played a game in the cup and scored a goal. So, uh... I love that for, for our big six foot five striker. Not sure he's massively improving though, but we're having a good season. It might be a bit of a transition season here with Johan Dumont taking over at the club. We might want to look for a right midfielder. I might want to go and spend some of the money that we've got, which isn't loads, but 17 million pounds still in there. The, uh, the funds still at 37, which if you think about how much debt we were in, we're doing okay with it. The projection I don't think looks great, which is always the way, but then we get Champions League money and it will recover and go up and we might be able to sell some people too. This is where we're at. That's, um, I think, where we'll leave it for today. Thank you so much. Bit of a waffling one, a bit of a long one, because there was so much to update you with, with all of the, the manager turnover and everything. Good Johnson just getting off to Levante. Um, but thank you so much for watching. Thank you for seeing it all the way through to the end. If you have watched it to the end, you are the MVP. Thank you so much. I'll catch you next time. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, like the video, and um, yeah, have a good rest of your day. Bye-bye.